Hello, I am Zarkoon, and this is both World of Warships Legends and World of Warships on PC. That's right, I've got a double feature for you. And this double feature is a showcase of the Tier 7 on Legends Italian Cruiser Amalfi, and on World of Warships PC, it's the Tier 8 Italian Cruiser Amalfi. I'm going to show you two games in the ship, one on Legends, one on World of Warships. Why am I doing this? Well, there are very significant differences between the Amalfi on Legends and the Amalfi on World of Warships. And the main big difference is the shell types. On World of Warships Legends, the Amalfi has access to armor piercing and high explosive, whereas on World of Warships PC, it has access to semi-armor piercing and armor piercing. And there are some differences, some significant differences between these three shell types. And we're going to explain them all in detail, starting in this game with an explanation of how high explosive and armor piercing works. And I realize probably most of you know how they work, but I'm going to explain them anyway because there may be some things you don't know. And by the way, I will leave links in the description of this video to the How It Works series that the World of Warships content creation team of Wargaming has made. These, this video series explains how it works for things like shell types, and I'll leave links to the video for the explanation of HE, AP, and SAP. But I'll explain them to you here if you don't want to go to another video to see it. But before we get into that, take a look at this kid out here. I'm going to shoot high explosive at him and take note of the damage I do. So we started at 480 damage before we took that salvo. Now we're up to 4,000. So we've done somewhere in the ballpark of the high 3k type salvo, right? And we're going to shoot this kid again blind in the smoke. That's something you can do sometimes if you can get a read on where the shell tracers are coming from within the smoke and your aim is good enough to hit whatever is inside of it. I'm fairly practiced at that so I can do it. Just take note of the damage that I inflict on this kid as I do it. So he's right there. I'm gonna take that shot 4k damage to 6k damage so roughly 2k. The damage I'm doing to the kid with the high explosive in this game is significant because in the next game I'm going to face an enemy kid as well but this time I'll be shooting ar semi armor piercing at him and you'll see the differences between the damage we fired three salvos of high explosive at the kid done about 12k 11k damage and our torpedoes are actually going to end up taking the kid out and then we're going to be able to move out of the way of his torpedo salvo which was launched at pretty much point-blank range. That is something to say about the Amalfi between Legends and World of Warships PC, by the way. The Amalfi on Legends can be a much more agile and much more stealthy cruiser, thanks in large part to the Legends Commander skill system, which offers a lot more customizable skills, I suppose you could say, than the World of Warships one. There are skills that can affect the detectability of ships and skills that can affect their top speed and a rudder shift. And a lot of those skills in World of Warships Legends really don't have equivalent skills in the PC commander system. So on Legends, I can get the Amalfi's sea detectability range down below 9.9 .9 kilometers using the concealment module and Yerzy Swirsky and Gunichi Mikawa, so long as they're high enough level, as commander inspirations for my commander build. Now I have the sea detectability on the Amalfi here down to 9.9 .9 kilometers because I am, I don't think using both Swirsky and Mikawa, or maybe I'm not using the concealment module. Still, it's excellent concealment, and I don't think that kind of concealment is possible for the Amalfi on World of Warships. Simultaneously, the same thing is true of the rudder shift. I think on World of Warships, with the steering gears module, maybe even both steering gears modules, 
I have the rudder shift of the Malfi down somewhere below 8 seconds, which is fairly responsive. But on Legends, I have that rudder shift down, I think, sub 5 seconds, which is ridiculously agile. It makes this ship very agile, also very stealthy, and that is an interesting combination with the high explosive and armor piercing shells. And the high explosive shells here are pretty comparable to say the Mogami's 203 millimeter high explosive shells. They've got a similar alpha strike and a lower fire chance, I think, but a pretty good fire chance. Now, what are the differences between high explosive and armor piercing and how do they work? Well, high explosive has a set penetration value. It cannot penetrate more than that value, and you figure out that value by taking the shell caliber in millimeters and most often at least on the case of the Amalfi here, dividing by 6. That gives you the threshold of armor you can penetrate. And if you take 203 divided by 6, you get something like 33.333 something. So the Amalfi's high explosive can pen 32 millimeters of armor, and it can pen that armor regardless of the distance of the shot, regardless of the angle of the target, and regardless of the shell speed. High Explosive does not lose penetration over distance, and the penetration is not affected by shell speed. And then it hits the armor, and it either penetrates it or it shatters. Now if it shatters, there's always the chance that it can start fire. And every time the High Explosive explodes, it releases splash damage, or an area of effect damage, I guess. The splash damage is in a cube-like shape, and... It can hit modules like the anti-aircraft mounts on ships and disable those, or lightly armored modules like those on destroyers, say the turrets or the torpedo tubes. The splash damage from high explosive can also disable those. So that's generally how high explosive works. And then armor piercing is a little bit more tricky of a shell, not quite as easy as high explosive, because you do have to worry about the angle of ships, High explosive, or rather armor piercing, will penetrate, well it has a set penetration value that you can't actually see in the game. For example, if I shot the armor piercing of the Amalfi straight at the Citadel protecting belt armor of a uh, tier 7 enemy battleship here, uh, it would not penetrate that belt armor, it would probably just shatter. But it would probably penetrate the upper belt armor of enemy battleships. Basically, it's not going to be punching through the thickest armor you can possibly face, but it'd be very good against broadside cruisers and the superstructure of unangled battleships or the upper belt armor of unangled battleships. And armor piercing can ricochet at angles less than 46 degrees, or rather 45 degrees. At angles less than 45 degrees, there's a chance for ricochet. And then I think at angles of 30 degrees or less, there is a guaranteed chance of ricochet for the armor piercing. But if they do penetrate the ship's armor that you're shooting at, then they have the chance to score critical damage, that is, citadel damage, and citadel damage is mostly unhealable. So there's a nice synergy, I suppose you could say, between high explosive and AP. You shoot high explosive at lightly armored angled surfaces in order to deal consistent, albeit low, damage, and you also shoot it for the chance to start fires which deal damage over time. And then the armor piercing, that is the shell type that you use when you're going for the big knockout alpha strike, right? So there's nice synergy between the two shells, a nice balance you might say, and they complement each other pretty well. And that is generally how high explosive and armor piercing works. And probably anybody who has played World of Warships Legends or World of Warships PC for long enough, uh, they probably have a pretty intuitive understanding of how the two shell types work. Semi-armor piercing is something entirely different. Well, not entirely different, it actually shares features of both the high explosive and armor piercing shell types. And I think we'll get to that once we get into the next game on World of Warships PC. 
But before we do that, I think I actually want to call out the shots of this game. Because right now, it looks like the enemy team has every advantage, right? They are ahead on ships. They've got three caps as well. But that Iowa, he's on almost no health. So we take a shot at him with our high explosive. Unfortunately, RNG is going to decide that we don't get the kill. I think probably his superstructure is pretty saturated at this point. But the second salvo, that is going to take out the Iowa because he had, what, like... 70 hit points left so there he goes and that puts us ahead on points by just a little bit but not enough the enemy team because they hold three out of four of the capture circles will be able to easily overtake us on points and they'll be able to do it very quickly in fact they already have so long as none of their ships sink and at this point with four minutes left to go in the match sinking enemy ships is really our only hope of winning. Luckily, our teammates there sink the Cleveland. Now, we're heading straight for the Alpha Cap because we want to at least contest one of the enemy's caps so that they aren't accruing points from it. And we're also going to desperately need to sink ships. The two battleships that I have with me over here, I wish earlier they wouldn't have been behind this island directly in front of me. There were two of them versus that Georgia and the Iowa in the cap earlier, but they couldn't actually shoot at the Georgia or the Iowa because they were hiding behind the island. But at least now they're pushing up to help contribute to the outcome of this match, so I guess better late than never. Cleveland out there on our team is shooting at the Georgia. I ping him to stop doing that. I think it's more important that he goes and kills what I suspect is the enemy destroyer inside that Delta cap. And the Cleveland replies Roger, I guess understanding his role as a high DPM radar cruiser, which is nice to see. And he does make a turn to start heading for the Delta Cap. Meanwhile, the Georgia over here was expecting me, but I'm able to deploy the Amalfi's exhaust smoke screen to conceal myself as I go around this corner. I think the Georgia, if he hasn't already, there's the blind shot. Frustrated that he can't see me, takes that blind shot. So, now that I know he's on the reload, I shoot at him, and remember, he has been taking a lot of high explosive spam from that Cleveland, so I do believe his damage control is on cooldown, which means he can't put out that fire I just set, and he certainly can't put out the second fire. Two permafires. I hope those will be lethal against the Georgia. The enemy team has overtaken us on points once again, so we really do need to sink this guy. And there are less than three minutes left to go in the match. So we're never going to win by points because we don't hold any of the caps right now. We can only win by killing ships. And this is really not a situation you want to find yourself in when you're playing a domination mode battle. As I've said for years, the cap circles are the primary objectives here. Why? Because as long as you maintain control of the capture circles, they give your team a passive, steady income of points. But sinking ships, while it also gives you points, the points only come in a one-time lump sum, and they don't continue to generate after the ship has been sunk. So in order to maintain a robust lead over the enemy, you really do have to maintain control over capture circles. Anyway, where are we at as this game winds down? Just over a minute left to go. 770 points to 718. Frankly, the enemy team has this game in the bag. They don't actually have to do anything. They do not have to kill any of us. They don't have to sink any of our ships. All that North Carolina and his destroyer teammate have to do is turn around, disengage, and go dark, and they will probably overtake us on points thanks to their cap control. However, the North Carolina doesn't appear to be able to disengage and go dark. He's being spotted by the friendly Cleveland and taking HE spam from him, and hopefully he's not going to survive the focus fire of all my remaining teammates for the next 30 seconds, because we do need to sink him in order to win. But the Akatsuki unexpectedly torpedoes the Cleveland to death just before the Cleveland's fire takes out the North Carolina. 
So we trade a cruiser for a battleship, and luckily for us, battleships, when they die, are worth more points than cruisers when they die. So that's just enough to give us less than a 10-point lead, and the enemy team, again, could overtake us on points if there was enough time left in this game, but luckily for us, there's not enough time left in this game. And we finish with, I think, 80,000 damage done, top of the leaderboard with 2,800, 2,700 base XP, almost 2,800. So pretty good result in the Amalfi, shooting high explosive and armor piercing and being very agile and stealthy. Now, on to World of Warships, where we have the Tier 8 Amalfi. And let's begin talking about SAP, continuing our discussion from earlier where we talked about how high explosive and armor piercing works. So SAP, which I am loading right now at this very moment, has penetration properties similar to high explosive, but it has an alpha strike more comparable to armor piercing. Unlike high explosive though, SAP has no chance to cause fires, it does not produce splash damage, and it can sometimes ricochet, just like armor piercing. But sap penetration is much like high explosive penetration and very much like, unlike armor piercing penetration, unaffected by distance or shell speed. So it doesn't matter how far away the target is from sap, and it doesn't matter how fast the shell velocity is, the sap maintains the same penetration over all distances. The Amalfi's sap penetration is 54 millimeters. So the Amalfi's sap will pen any armor value below that threshold, regardless of distance, just like HE. Now, when sap penetrates a layer of armor that it hits, it immediately detonates, much like high explosive does. So if you fire it at spaced armor, that is an armor scheme where there is space between the first layer of armor and another part of the ship that can actually take damage. It can penetrate the spaced armor, but cause zero damage. Now this phenomenon most commonly happens when you hit the torpedo protection of ships, because the torpedo protection armor is spaced armor. There's nothing between the torpedo protection armor and the actual armor that protects the part of the ship that can actually take damage. So if your sap shells hit that torpedo protection, they'll penetrate it, but they'll do zero damage. And I guess in the past, in World of Warships, when sap was introduced, this kind of thing showed up as just penetrations on the shell indicator ribbons that did zero damage, and it was kind of confusing to some players. They've since updated that though, so if you hit the torpedo protection of an enemy battleship, say, with the sap here now, it will say torpedo protection hit. So keep a lookout for those instances in this game as we continue. Although, you know, I should probably add that as compensation for this peculiar shell type quirk where you can penetrate spaced armor and get zero damage, there is a compensation in the sense that sap never over penetrates. Now, sap also has overmatch potential, much like armor piercing. You can figure out what a sap shell can overmatch by taking the caliber of the shell in millimeters and dividing by 14.3, just as you do with armor piercing. But of course, sap can penetrate higher values of armor than its overmatch threshold, so again, the Amalfi with its 203 millimeter guns can penetrate 54 millimeters of armor with its sap, but it can overmatch 13 millimeters of armor. So if you're shooting at a armored surface that is 13 millimeters of armor with sap, it will overmatch that armor, meaning it will penetrate the armor regardless of the angle of the armor. But if the armor value is higher than 13 millimeters and less than 54 millimeters, angling does play a factor and sap shells can like armor piercing shells sometimes ricochet but before we talk about the possibility of ricochet for sap shells i want to direct your attention to the mini map right now 
There is an enemy destroyer in the Bravo cap. It is the USS Kidd, and we are going to be able to shoot at him just as we shot at a Kidd in a cap in the last game. The difference here is, of course, we will be shooting the armor or the semi armor piercing shells rather than the high explosive, and you can see just how effective these sap shells are against destroyers. Again, they can never over penetrate, which means they get full penetration damage on destroyers. So here's this kid, he doesn't know we're here, his guns aren't even pointed this way, and we hit him for 7k, 7.6k there, I think. And once our guns are reloaded, this kid is as good as dead. So compare that to what happened earlier in the Legends game with the high explosive. I think we had to shoot four salvos at the kid there, and we only took him out with our torpedoes. The four salvos weren't even enough to do enough damage to him to sink him. But with sap, two salvos. So sap is wickedly effective against destroyers, but... I digress. Going back to the ricochet chances for sap. So if it's shooting at a surface of armor that it can penetrate but can't overmatch, then ricochet comes into play. Sap shells are guaranteed to ricochet from angles between 0 degrees and 10 degrees. There's a possibility of ricochet at 11 to 15 degrees, and finally, the sap shells have no possibility to ricochet from 16 to 90 degrees. So you can see that the sap has much, much wider penetration angles than armor piercing, which, for comparison, armor piercing enjoys no possibility of ricochet starting at angles wider than 46 degrees compared to the sap's 16. So... Sap is much, much harder to angle against than armor piercing, but it is not going to penetrate as much armor as the armor piercing. For example, if you are in the Amalfi and you are shooting sap at the Citadel protecting belt armor of an enemy cruiser, which say it's maybe 100 millimeters in thickness, well, your sap shells can only pen 54 millimeters, so if they hit that belt armor, they are going to not penetrate, they're going to shatter. But if you shoot AP at that same belt armor and its broadside, then your AP most likely is going to penetrate that belt armor and is going to potentially inflict citadel damage. Sap can also inflict citadel damage, by the way, but again, sap can only penetrate one layer of armor. So in order to affect citadel damage to an enemy ship in an Italian cruiser with sap, you pretty much usually have to shoot it at lightly armored cruisers whose citadels are exposed and whose armor protection over that citadel is thin enough that the Amalfi's sap can penetrate it. And I think maybe something actually like a Fiji or an Atlanta they might have thin enough citadel protection that the sap can penetrate the citadel armor and strike the citadel. So, basically, what we've learned here is that for firing sap, I suppose the easiest way to think about it is you fire it at places where you would normally fire high explosive, except you can keep in mind that the sap penetration is more than high explosive shell penetration. Again, the Amalfi with its 203 millimeter guns. With HE, it could only pen 32 millimeters of armor, but with SAP, it can pen 54. Nevertheless, you shoot it at lightly armored surfaces. The angle can be pretty favorable to you, as long as it's more than 16 degrees. You don't have the possibility to ricochet, so you're aiming at the upper belt armor of ships, the superstructures, the bow plating and stern plating areas so long as the angle is favorable enough for you for your sap to penetrate and then you shoot ap at broadsides the difference is the sap has no chance of causing fire unlike he and it does not deal splash damage but you sort of shoot it in the same places as 
H-E. So I hope that gives you an understanding of how SAP works. However, I think there is something to be said about SAP as a concept. So while HE causes relatively low consistent damage and has the added bonus of starting a fire, AP causes relatively high damage but is not as consistent and requires the target to be presenting a favorable angle in order to achieve its maximum effectiveness, right? But if it does achieve that maximum effectiveness, then the damage it causes is more severe and it can cause critical, mostly unhealable damage. So there's kind of a nice balance between the two, right? If you're in a situation where AP is ineffective, you can switch to HE to fill in the gaps and keep inflicting consistent, albeit low damage. But if you're in a situation where you could, say, get citadels with AP and instead use HE, you're denying yourself the ability to sink or cripple a ship, and that may come back to bite you as soon as immediately. Who knows? It's what you might call, I guess, a pretty good balance in concept, right? But the sap shells combine the concepts and elements of both shell types in such a way that it sort of throws a wrench into the entire conceptual scheme. What I mean by that is imagine if you couldn't angle to AP, or imagine that HE could score citadels and hit you for 50k knockout salvos. That's sort of what SAP does in like a principled sense, I guess you could say, or at least it sort of feels like that if you're on the receiving end of particularly nasty SAP salvos. HE kind of like a spammy, easy shell that doesn't necessarily require precise aim and doesn't require a favorable angle. It can do consistent damage with every hit, but the damage is low. AP, on the other hand, more difficult because it does require a favorable angle, but the damage, in turn, is much higher. SAP doesn't really care so much about angle in the same sort of way as HE does, and it can pretty consistently pen like HE, but it hits like AP. So, in some situations, in some ships, it can really feel like there's nothing you can do about SAP when it's being shot at you, and at its worst, SAP can be stupidly broken. Just look up some videos of what the Tier 10 cruiser Austin can do in World of Warships with its rapid-fire, low-caliber SAP. In my opinion, having watched some videos from Flambass and the like on that ship, it is pretty broken, and that has everything to do with the shell characteristics of SAP and the unique way that they work. So there is that element to it, I guess. I think it's important to keep that in mind if you are a player who would like to see SAP brought into World of Warships Legends. There are reasons to be a little bit critical of this shell type. Now that being said, I think I do want to see SAP in Legends, particularly for the heavy Italian cruiser line that we have, and perhaps for the destroyer Paolo Emilio. Now I definitely don't think SAP should ever be given to a high DPM light cruiser, sort of like Austin in World of Warships, and I'm not sure about Battleship Caliber SAP either. I can tell you that I've been hit by SAP from Italian battleships in this game and been absolutely wrecked. Oh, by the way, take a look at this Amalfi out here who is shooting AP at us and ricocheting because we are pretty well angled. Now, he's angled to us. If we were shooting AP at him, we might be ricocheting as well but we are shooting SAP, so we were getting some pretty good penetrations there before our teammates took him out. And I think we're about to spot the enemy aircraft carrier as well. Yes, take a look at some of our shots on him. You'll see the indicator that says torpedo protection hit and will get zero damage. That's the SAP penetrating spa the spaced armor, the torpedo protection, and not scoring any damage. Anyway, um... I don't know about the SAP on Battleship Caliber AP. I think if it does come to Legends, it must only be limited to the heavy Italian cruiser line and maybe the destroyer like Palo Emilio. But I do think the addition of SAP to the Italian cruiser line 
would make it a more attractive line to Legends players. Although I will tell you that HE might in fact be preferable on the lower tier Italian cruisers because SAP down there isn't quite as potent. It was actually fairly terrible to grind to the Amalfi on PC. Everything that preceded it really, really was not that great. And I would have rather had shells that at least had the chance of starting fire along the way, if I'm being honest. Except for destroyers, where the low tier sap is uh, pretty superior to HE. And I guess this is all to say, yeah, bring on the sap, Legends developers. But then again, it may in the future seem in retrospect like a case of be careful what you wish for. I don't know. I'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts on it in the comments section. And one last thing about SAP as we wrap up this game here. Uh, when you're shooting at heavily armored battleships, and the Italian battleships are pretty heavily armored, and so are the German battleships and the Russian battleships, well, if your SAP shells hit an armor surface that is protected greater than, you know, 54 millimeters, they're not going to penetrate. So... It can feel like when you're shooting at heavily armored battleships with really thick armor, like you really can't do anything to them with your sap because it just won't penetrate. And if they're angling toward you, there's not much you can do with the armor piercing either. So in those situations, it really is nice to have high explosive because, again, at least the high explosive can start a fire. Just something to keep in mind. Nevertheless, I hope you have a good understanding of sap now. So that if you are a World of Warships Legends player who would like to see SAP added and you would like to make the case to the developers that it should be added, well, at least now you have an understanding of what SAP is. Or at least I hope you have that understanding. That was the goal of this particular video. As we wrap up here, I should note out that my cat is meowing at me. I apologize if you can hear that in the background. I think he is upset with me for some reason. He doesn't like it when I talk into the microphone for long periods because, you know, he wants attention. Anyway, I should point out that I am using some mods in this particular game that I've since taken off because I think they clutter up the screen too much. Uh, but... The one mod I would recommend if you are a Legends player who wants to play World of Warships on PC and can is Aslan's Mod Pack with the dynamic crosshair called Smart Horizon. It just seems to me like the Smart Horizon crosshair makes a lot more sense in terms of the numbered notches on it than the default crosshairs in there. And also you can change the ribbons in Aslan's Mod Pack pack to look like World of Warships Legends ribbons, which I think look better than the World of Warships ones. Anyway, we're coming to the end of the battle now. I do hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it informative. Let me know what you think about SAP in the comments and whether you would like to see SAP brought to World of Warships Legends. And also let me know if you would like me to do any other double features of ships between Legends and PC because it could be an interesting series of videos. Anyway, be sure to give the video a thumbs up before you leave if you did find it valuable. Again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.